the Kree are blue aliens from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. No, Yondu is a Centaurian. No, not Nebula either. She's a Lupomid. Yes, I know they're both blue. That's a Levian. That's a Smurf. There we go, that's a creep. No, go back. That's a Flurkin. Okay, so there will be minor spoilers for Captain Marvel throughout and major spoilers after a warning. Now, this index will delve into the militaristic and noble race of the Kree Empire, as seen in the cinematic universe, for the good of all Kree. The homeworld of the Kree is Hala, a technically advanced and ancient civilization with access to the Universal Neural Teleportation Network. The homeworld houses many cities and complexes, and it has a golden-hued atmosphere from the Palmer System's star. Transit Systems operates within the cities that snake through the flat-topped towers that rise up from metallic structures. In the hearts of these cities, it's almost impossible to spot natural growth. The heraldry of the Kree Empire is silver and green, and its crests include a three-pointed glyph as well as a ringed planet. The Kree themselves are humanoid and vary in skin tones from pinks to browns, but most commonly dark and light hues of blue. Hair colour is varied, and the most common eye colour is purple, though hazel, yellow, green and blue were not unheard of. Many Kree in the military choose to shave their heads completely. The variation in skin tone is, as on Earth and many other planets, a result of adaptation to various climates and genetic heritage. This may tie into the levels of nitrogen on the planet, as high concentrations of nitrogen can change the hue of a blue-skinned Kree to pink. Another common trait among the Kree is that of the tattoos and war paints, even among positions of official capacity. Physiologically, when compared to humans, Kree biology is far more complex. They are stronger, more coordinated and agile, as well as much more durable, being able to take rather sizeable kinetic impacts with only a short recovery period. This is aided by their healing factor, though not at instantaneous levels, it is remarkable enough to inspire humans to study it, and found Project Tahiti to attempt to utilise Kree blood as a cure. The use of Kree blood to revitalise a comparatively basic human form has been accomplished twice, once with Agent Coulson of S.H.I.E.L.D. The product of this amazing physiology might be down to genetic engineering, as the Kree are known practitioners of the science, even experimenting with other species and forming the Terragen crystals. That were a part of a process called Terragenesis, where a subject's DNA was rewritten to create a new meta-ability. The civilization is an empire, ruled by its emperor, though the supreme intelligence is seemingly the true seat of power, so let's start there. The supreme intelligence has control of the Kree military and its many branches. As the civilization is highly militaristic, this gives the supreme intelligence great sway over the decisions of the empire, some would argue complete sway. The supreme intelligence is an artificial intelligence and a compilation of the Kree's greatest minds. Highly respected by its citizens, regardless of position, the Kree consider direct communion with the intelligence an honour and a deeply personal experience. Communion is accomplished by linking neurally to the system, and therefore the intelligence will adopt the form of the person you respect most when in discussion. It is therefore unknown if the supreme intelligence has a physical form at all. As one of the Kree beliefs is that the deceased join the collective, Perhaps this could be an addition of a Kree's consciousness to the Supreme Intelligence. The role of the Emperor is unknown in the late 20th century, but is likely the ruler of the Empire, but like all Kree, diverts to the Supreme Intelligence, or at least seeks its counsel. As of the early 21st century, however, the Emperor has taken a greater stance on diplomatic relations and appointed ambassadors to rival powers, such as Xandar. The Kree possess literal nobility in the form of houses. These houses often act autonomously with their own agendas, but all must place the good of the Empire before their own gain. For the good of all Kree, this ideology is the focal point of the Empire and has led to many acts and conflicts with the ultimate goal of expanding Kree influence throughout space. The military of the Kree, under the purview of the Supreme Intelligence, has several divisions. Star Force is an elite task force with a focus on stealth operations and provided with some of the most advanced equipment in the Imperial Armoury. This includes camouflaging armour that is environmentally sealed and houses a collapsible helmet. The Star Force uniform can operate in a vacuum or underwater and provides a great deal of protection for the wearer, only outshone in performance by the armour donned by the accusers. 
Most of the military is equipped with directed energy weapons of various functions, but all engage in rigorous close quarters combat, many even favouring it and sporting melee weapons such as swords, axes and hammers. Engaging a Kree at range is dangerous, engaging a Kree in CQC is stupid. The Accuser Corps is ranked higher than all other military factions of the Kree and operates under the direct orders of the Supreme Intelligence. Despite their position, they operate in cohorts with other divisions, but are the only ones able to authorise certain actions, such as the destruction of a planet. The Accusers were notable for having incredibly durable armour, distinctive cowls, and carrying the large hammers that acted as a symbol of their authority. The name Accuser likely stems from the fact that they carry the ability to judge, discipline, and enact justice, both within Kree society and without. This is not alluded to in the films, but it must be the case, as it is in the comics, as the functional title is still the same. The Accusers also have their own fleet of ships, such as the Dark Aster, captained by Ronan the Accuser, which are the most formidable, powerful, and heavily armed vessels in the Kree Armada. In 2014, however, with the signing of the Zandarian Peace Treaty, the Accusers were disbanded. Cree language is a series of glyphs, and they utilise universal translators when communicating with other species. Their names are usually double barrelled with a forename and a surname of one syllable. The surname is likely a family one, but many Cree only have a single name, often of more than one syllable. In the case of Ronan and Korath, titles are affixed to them as a designation, the Accuser and the Pursuer respectively. Another name, Tyan, is the head of the Cassius house, suggesting Cassius is a family name. It seems that if a Cree has a single syllable name, they are addressed by their full title, but if the first name is longer, then it is the only name used in face-to-face -face conversation, though there are some exceptions such as Maston Da and Verz, though Verz is likely due to her amnesia and loss of a family name. The history of the Kree is one seldom without extended periods of conflict. During the 20th and 21st centuries, the Kree Empire was engaged in active campaigns against the Skrull species and the Nova Corps of the planet Xandar. The Xandarian War in particular had been raging for around a thousand years, with it becoming a known fact in Kree society that the Nova Corps were arrogant, impure, and unworthy would-be tyrants, while the Kree were the noble race of guardians bringing the universe to order. This war was eventually settled in a peaceful negotiation between Hala and Xandar that ended hostilities. For many, however, the war had become a part of their life, and its conclusion in peace, without a clear victor, and therefore a true resolution, sparked great unrest in the populace. Rioting and protests on Hala were common, and factions even broke away from the Empire in favour of continuing the Kree campaigns. Compiling the unrest was the dissolution of the Accusers, which in turn had individuals like Ronan marshal his loyal forces and like-minded personnel to seek out his own method of defeating Xandar, which he did by allying himself with the mad titan, Thanos. There's also the ancient war of the Kree that led to the formation of the Inhumans on Earth. Thousands of years ago, a faction of the Kree Empire, potentially known as the Reapers, used their advanced genetics knowledge to create foot soldiers for an empire with superpowers. It failed in most cases, except on C-53, Earth, where a small percentage of the human population experimented on by the Kree faction exhibited results. These individuals were then exposed to pterogen mists, which caused them to exhibit genetic mutations and the evolution of a variety of superpowers. The resulting army proved rebellious, as humans tend to be, so the Kree eventually withdrew from the experiment and left behind several of its number to watch for further inhuman activity. The research, although technically a success, was branded as a failure and forgotten about from then on. Upon the re-emergence of the inhuman population, however, another Kree faction attempted to suppress this information, knowing that the Kree would potentially drag another civilization into its constant warfare. Alongside the Xandar Kree War, there was the continued campaign against the Skrulls, which were a race that could morph their features and hide from sight. This race was known for infiltrating planets and subverting them to the Skrulls' cause by gradually replacing people in positions of power. This war, as with the Xandarian conflict, was less of an all-out assault and more of a prolonged campaign of identifying corrupted planets, purging the Skrulls' infestation, and bringing those worlds under Kree protection. 
If all was lost and beyond saving, then the planet was reduced to cinders by the accusers, and the loss used to justify the continued campaigns against the horrid Skrulls. At some point near the start of the war, the planet Skrullos no prizes for guessing which species his homeworld that was, was utterly obliterated by the Kree Empire to try and halt the spread. Despite this, however, the Kree know the value of negotiation, and have entered into several pacts, such as the Confederacy, an alliance between the Kree, the Astrans, the Kalusians, the Remorath, the Rajax, and another unknown species. The purpose of this compact was to ensure the procurement of Inhumans to bolster the Confederacy's member planets and in return, they would safeguard planet C-53 from external threats. There are also the Sakaran species who have been conquered by the Kree and liberated from their home planet of Sakaar, which itself is a wasteland of junk. In return for this, they fight for the Kree in their army. Though the level of Kree involvement in the Confederacy seems to suggest that it was a smaller scope deal managed by an individual Kree house, the House of Cassius in this case. Propaganda is prevalent in their society with daily announcements about the status of the various campaigns being fed to the general public over PA systems, highlighting the villainous endeavours by the enemies of the Empire and the days without incident to the Kree people, and it has strongly affected how the Kree view themselves. Most Kree within the Empire view themselves as being in the right in all things, and the military in particular see themselves as heroes. Not just noble warriors, but full-on heroes, to which the rest of the galaxy is thankful for intervening. Most of this index I have presented so far has been from the Kree's point of view, but this is where things are going to get spoilery for Captain Marvel. So, the Kree's many wars and conflicts can easily be explained by their desire to impose their rule across as many systems as they can. The Skrulls refused Kree oversight and have had their homeworld destroyed as a result. Attempts from the Skrulls to hide from the Kree led them to being persecuted and pursued across numerous worlds, where their hiding out eventually dragged the Empire's attention. Because secrecy was their safety, the Kree could easily manipulate planetary governments into acting out against the Skrulls and supporting the Kree. If the planet continued to resist the Kree, then the Empire could accuse the planet of being too far gone and cauterise the hostilities. The Sakarans that were in the Kree's military? They were never used as anything more than soldiers and had a reputation as paper people, disposable and low threat, but were thrown against enemy forces in droves. Are these the actions of an Empire that seeks to guard its protectorates? Yet these actions are kept within the higher echelons of Kree command, such as the Accusers, being the only ones sanctioned to bombard a planetary surface. Immoral experimentation on humanity was buried and never addressed within the Empire. All of this leads to an easy control over the flow of information, allowing the Empire to forge its own image where it indoctrinates its citizens and soldiers into thinking that they are the moral authority that the galaxy needs. Xandar, as we see them in the films, is far from the overzealous tyrant that they're painted as, and if anything, it's the Kree that come off the worst in this regard. Further methods of control over its own people can be seen in the fact that the Supreme Intelligence adopts the form of someone you respect the most when in direct communion with it, making you far more likely to heed its counsel and respect its authority. It is unknown if the Supreme Intelligence is still in existence in modern Kree society, as the peace treaty with Xandar was a controversial decision brought about by its Emperor, the new leader of the Kree society. The Emperor could have replaced the Intelligence, however I think it's more likely that both positions have existed for some time, and what we are witnessing is a shift in power from the control-orientated, unquestionable Intelligence to a more diplomatic Emperor, explaining the levels of unrest in the Empire last we saw of it. Thanks for listening to this Cultural Index on the Kree Empire. The votes for the next episode are in the comments below, and this time the choices are from another comics-based race, the Kryptonians, or the Novacore of Xandar, going with the comic book adaptations of both races this time. Thanks again for watching. I've been Rick, 
and I hope to see you again for the next video. Until then, goodbye. For the good of all Cree. <laughs>